Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Um, got a special for you here. Um, so, but how about we just get to the show since there appears to be nothing else going on today. Yes, this episode is going to be on Vincent Price's The Last Man on Earth. This is the first movie out of, I believe, three popular, no, out of four popular and one crap movie based on the original story of I Am Legend. Not to say that the later versions were perfect, although I would argue that uh, the second movie to do use the story's background, uh, Night of the Living Dead, did have some interesting ideas and took it its own different direction. Um, however, the whole dead coming to life is pretty much about the main basis between the two. But uh, we're not here to talk about just that. Um, our movie starts off with Vincent Price waking up. And he's in a very rad shackled house now. The window is constantly boarded up and he seems to be, um... Very rough around the edges, shall we say. Turns out that it's been a couple of years since, uh... The Earth was overrun by undead monsters, which seems to borderline between vampires and zombies. No, uh, as far as he's aware, he became the last man on Earth. So, how does this film compare to some of the others, first of all, and then get this out of the way? To be honest, I don't think most of the other films that took the I Am Legend idea are quite as emotional as this film. Is it as action-packed as either the Will Smith I Am Legend or the Omega Man version? Not really. There's some action to be had here and there, but it's not overwhelmingly constant action. However, what this movie does get right, that the others don't barely even touch upon, is the emotional grip of the character. This is a man who has lost everything dear to him. He has lost his child, he has lost his wife, he is alone, and he is trying to deal with the monsters the only way he sanely can, which is by hunting them down and killing them during the day and then hiding away at his house during the night. Yet despite having done this for years, he's still not an unemotional killing machine. He still has feelings, and as a matter of fact, he still has breakdowns remembering what happened to his wife and his daughter. So the first act, we just mostly see him right about doing his usual business. That is, before he has an emotional breakdown the second day of the uh, plot, and finally he has to go off to visit what I would assume is possibly where his wife is buried. I cannot say for sure as they don't completely explain it. And there's a reason why he, it's kind of confusing, but that would delve too far into the plot and we won't do that here. But uh, for not comparing it to the other movies, what do we have here then? What we have here is a very strong emotional movie. The acting by Vincent Price, mostly by himself, carries the film. He is 
you can tell what his character is going on about. He the, he's the cold man who's hunting down monsters. He's the emotional <laughs> husband and uh, father who lost everything. Or he's the man who suddenly realizes there's a bigger world out there full of possible survivors that he can save. But again, that's uh, delving into the plot a bit, and we won't cover that too much here, as much as possible. The music is not memorable by my standards, at least. It's not the kind of music I normally go for. However, I will say that being this is a 1950s movie, unless someone was to pull a Giorgio Moroder on it, um, the music does its job. Put it that way, the music does what it needs to do. It provides an extra oomph to the emotions that you're supposed to be feeling along with the superb acting provided to us by, again, Vincent Price. Three, Being that this is a dead-come-to-life story, we do have a little bit of coverage on how it begins, why his wife and his daughter died, or how they at least escaped the mortal coil in, as he tried to protect them. We also do uh, see some of the other after effects that have happened since then. And it slowly unravels a little bit more as the film continues to further on. To be honest, we didn't need to see the uh, couple of years that we missed between his emotional beginnings and what happened to his family to where he is at this point. Because it's very obvious what he's been doing up to this point, and they even do a montage to it in the early half of the film where he's hunting down these monsters. But despite his many attempts to try and get any kind of outside contact, he generally believes himself to be the true last human. Which, on a level, not quite wrong on that. Although he does try to his very best to try and change that before the movie's through. And, again, I won't go into spoilers. I want to, but I won't. As old as the movie this is, as this is, and I'm sure there are people out there who are saying, why are you bothering reviewing it? Why are you bothering trying to not do spoilers? Just, no, no, that's not what this show is about. This is about whether or not this is good on its own merits. The other actors outside Vincent Price generally do their job. Uh, there are some awkward moments, however, where, um, how to put this? They redubbed some of their acting, possibly due to noise, and the redubbing feels very forced for right, some of the other actors. That, face? <laughs> that right. aside, if uh, Vincent Price did need redubbing, he did a very good job of redubbing himself, so that much at least turned out well. But there seems to be one character in particular, you can tell he was redubbed and he sounds pretty bad. But that's probably about the worst part of this film. There's some really great cinematography, lots of camera angles. It very clearly states some of the weaknesses of these monsters and also how they go about doing things. To which, I have to say, this is probably, uh, a along with the actual story, I'm legend, this film itself might have actually kind of sort of inspired Giorgio. And despite the story itself, the and, and aside from the I Am Legend story itself, you kind of get the feeling that some of what you see in this movie also might have further inspired George A. Romero when he did Night of the Living Dead. And... You probably wouldn't be too far on that. I'm sure it's a movie that he did see at the time. I thought, that's kind of cool. How about we do our own version? Because, to put it this honestly, The Last Man on Earth is more of a 
either big city New maybe York or even you know, uh, level, kind of a level that almost feels like maybe a British movie, almost. But um, the military actions seem to be far more American more to me. So, I, the, the last man on Earth leave. is more or less the big city version of the uh, Night of the Living Dead movie, which is very much a Midwestern small town kind of a thing. So, they they found a way to change things up between the two movies and made them both interesting in their own ways. But getting back onto topic... But getting back onto topic... The acting is alright, outside of Vincent Price, who is excellent no matter what movie he's in. The music is okay, at least it sets up the mood hey, that you're supposed you? to be feeling, even though you could easily feel it just through the emotions of Vincent Price himself. The cinematography is alright, it does do a few really Come cool here. scenes, a few interesting shots here and there as well. There's big cityscapes with no movement, there's bodies around the roads as you see Vincent Price driving. Uh, you also get to see the big fire pit that he takes the uh, undead corpses out to to permanently burn and make sure they never come back. And both the fire pit as well as some of the other things around him tend to get slowly explained as he also goes both into his history before the apocalypse kind of happened, as well as as we further develop things into the plot and further it to what the point is, which is, again, another spoiler, so I will not cover. But overall, we got good acting with good now, actors that we can name. Well, We've got music that is sunrise. not the best, but with the budget that this film had and the age of the film itself, not horrible. Something kind of predictable from uh, that age in movies, so yeah, it's all right. We got great cinematography. Um, the director has obviously got a head on his shoulders, but I would also state that the writer for this film. <laughs> oh my, what to say about this guy? The writer for this film actually quit this movie. Because he felt that Vincent Price wasn't the correct actor for this role. And that he felt they were making too many changes. Well, apparently, if they made any changes, they were for a very good reason. And Vincent Price wrong for the role? <laughs> Not this version, fuck no. I couldn't see anyone else doing this role back then and actually doing it right. Not unless there's some dumb idiot kid that could hardly act. That's not the only other thing I could think of that they would do back then. Maybe John West or something, but maybe John Wayne or something. But ew, I couldn't see him doing this role either. Really, he he probably want more of an action-oriented role than what Vincent Price would allow himself. But I digress. Overall, I think this is a really good old film. It's I don't usually delve too much into older films. But there are older ones here and there that usually get my interest, and keep it there. The Last Man on Earth is one of the few older films that I really quite like. It does its job well, and it is probably ranks right up there, if not a little bit higher than My Lady Dead. So, a worthwhile movie. But that's about it for right now. I'll catch you all later.